Tonight, as we come on the air in the West, the United flight skidding off the taxiway in Houston, the engine and part of the wing on the ground. Also reports tonight of a deadly helicopter crash on the southern border, what we're learning. And after his State of the Union address, President Biden has asked, will he debate Donald Trump? First tonight, the scare for 166 passengers and crew aboard that United flight from Memphis to Houston. The Boeing 737 MAX 8 landing at George Bush Airport, then off the taxiway. What the passengers saw and heard, Mola Lenghi with late reporting. That new storm targeting millions in the Northeast, widespread flooding possible. Flood watch is already up at this hour. There are also tornado concerns tonight. This is set to move into New York City and the Northeast. Rob Marciano timing it out. Tonight, President Biden now campaigning in the battlegrounds. First stop, his home state of Pennsylvania. And tonight, his answer about debating Donald Trump. And Vice President Harris asked about the intense focus on her because of the president's age and what she said to that. Mary Bruce with the interview tonight. Overseas tonight, the humanitarian crisis and a new tragedy in Gaza. The Hamas-run health ministry saying five children were crushed to death. They say an aid box falling on the children, the parachute failing to open. Tonight, the Pentagon aware of the reports, but says it was not U.S. delivered aid. Tom Sufi Burridge in the region. Just before the deadline, former President Trump posting a $91 million bond as he appeals the defamation verdict in the E. Jean Carroll case. Amid questions tonight about the money he still needs to put up, still owing hundreds of millions in his other civil case. Rachel Scott reporting. Dramatic testimony tonight at the trial of the father of the Michigan school shooter, Ethan Crumbly. The gun store manager describing the father, James Crumbly, purchasing the gun and what the father promised on a form. That gun then used by his son to kill four students. News just in tonight, the horrific crash. Reports of at least nine dead, a tractor trailer and a van on a state highway. Tonight, the new Pentagon report in what officials are now saying about decades of claims about UFOs, including whether the U.S. had alien technology. And Wick Johnson tonight in a much different assignment on the red carpet for us with what to watch for the Oscars Sunday night. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening. We are just back from Washington tonight. It is great to have you with us as we near the end of another week together here. There are reports of that helicopter crash on the southern border. What we're learning in just a moment. The president also in the battlegrounds tonight following his State of the Union address. And he was asked, will he debate Donald Trump? But we are going to begin tonight with the frightening moments on board a United flight skidding off the taxiway while landing in Houston in the rain, the third alarming incident involving a United Boeing aircraft this week alone. The Boeing 737 landing then sliding yeah, off the taxiway the far the from plane, the terminal. Man. The plane tilted backward, the engine and part of the wing resting right on the grass. The emergency evacuation, 160 passengers, six crew members exiting down the stairway. Emergency vehicles you can see standing by. ABC's Mola Lenghi leading us off tonight. Tonight, the FAA and NTSB investigating yet another incident after a United plane skidded off the taxiway in Houston. At 2477, I see in the grass rolling the uh, trucks en route. The Boeing 737 MAX 8 traveling from Memphis carrying 166 passengers and crew landing this morning at George Bush Airport. But as it exited the taxiway, the plane rolled into the grass. It seemed like the plane was trying to just, is going a little too fast and just slid off. That engine sitting down on the ground, buddy. The passengers exiting onto the airfield, no one injured. Please exit the aircraft slowly, carefully, one row at a time. Mike Allard filming this video. You can see the plane's nose wheels suspended off the ground. Wow, look at that. Look at that wing. It was more scary when you slid off and you realize the whole plane's tilted and we're in the dirt over on that one wing. United stating passengers were bused to the terminal, adding, we are thankful for the actions of our crew to deplane all passengers safely. Tonight, another incident in Los Angeles where a United flight made an emergency landing due to hydraulics failure. That flight landing safely, but was towed off the runway. And just yesterday, an alarming video capturing a United plane losing a tire upon takeoff. 
And on Monday, this united engine fire caused by bubble wrap sucked inside. After multiple incidents, there are questions about plane safety. There's no reason for the flying public to have any additional concern. If a tire falls off, that's either a materiel failure or a maintenance problem. If bubble wrap gets sucked down the engine of an airplane, then that's the airport's fault. So no real tie between these three incidents of United. Well, David, United saying tonight they take, quote, every safety incident seriously and will investigate each of the incidents that occurred this week. And Boeing saying they're providing support to United and to the investigators on the ground in Houston. David. All right, Mola Lenghi leading us off here on a Friday night. Mola, thank you. We are also following this new storm targeting millions in the Northeast, the third storm to hit the East Coast this week. There are also tornado concerns in the South from this same system at this hour. Torrential rain and a flash flood threat across the Gulf today and up to the Carolinas tomorrow morning. By midday tomorrow, drenching rains in Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. Heavy snow possible further inland and in parts of New England. Time-lapse video tonight, lightning near Fort Worth, Texas as the storm passed through. Flooded streets in southeast Kansas, some drivers trapped in it all. Senior meteorologist Rob Marciano timing it all out for us tonight. Hey, Rob. Hi, David. This is a big system that's barreling east with two big headlines, flooding and severe. The south getting them both tonight. We've got that tornado watch that includes New Orleans for the next couple of hours and a big flood watch from uh, Louisiana all the way through the Carolinas between I-10 and I-20. That's where the heaviest rain is going to be in places like Atlanta. You've seen a lot this week, so you'll probably see some flooding tonight. And the severe threat tomorrow across South Georgia and South Carolina in the morning and then the northern part of this thing takes shape. And look how much rain is coming to the northeast over Pennsylvania, D.C., Philly, New York by 7 p.m. That's when the heavy stuff arrives right in the metro area and then sliding up into the northeast. And the higher elevations in New England will see some significant snow, especially on the backside of this, clearing out eventually Sunday afternoon. But two, three inches of rain possible. It's been a wet week here in the east, so it's not going to take much to flood over the next 48 hours. David. Rob Barciano with us. We'll track it right through the weekend with you, Rob. Thank you. Now to the race for president tonight, the Biden-Trump rematch now fully underway and fresh off his State of the Union address last night, President Biden today on the campaign trail, heading to his home state first, the must-win battleground of Pennsylvania. Tonight here, his answer when asked today, will he debate Donald Trump? And Vice President Harris tonight asked about so much attention on her, given the president's age and what she said to that. ABC's Mary Bruce tonight with the interview. Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. Tonight, fueled by what his campaign considers a home run State of the Union, President Biden heading straight for battleground Pennsylvania, his must win home state. Did you all see Joe last night? Biden's team confident the 81-year-old president showed he has the energy and vigor to fight for a second term. Our freedoms really are on the ballot this November. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans are trying to take away our freedoms. That's not an exaggeration. Well, guess what? We will not let him. We will not let him. In his speech, the president calling out Donald Trump for pressuring Republicans to kill a bipartisan border deal because Trump wants to run on immigration and didn't want Biden to have the political win. The toughest set of border security reforms we've ever seen. Oh, you don't think so? Oh, you don't like that bill, huh? That conservatives got together and said it was a good bill? I'll be darned. That's amazing. Biden urging Republicans to work with him. Look, folks, we had a simple choice. We can fight about fixing the border or we can fix it. I'm ready to fix it. Send me the border bill now. The president also sounding a campaign rallying cry on abortion, directly addressing the Supreme Court justices seated right in front of him. Look, it's a decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. The Supreme Court majority wrote the following. And with all due respect, justices. Women are not without electoral, electoral power, uh, excuse me, electoral or political power. You're about to realize just how much you get right about that. Biden thanking his vice president, Kamala Harris, for leading that charge. Today, Harris hitting the campaign trail, too, heading to battleground Arizona. Earlier, I spoke with her and asked about Republicans being so focused on her. 
we've seen this argument over and over again from Republicans that the candidate they are really running against is you, that given the president's age, there is a chance that you may have to take over for him. What do you say to voters who are sold on the president but may not be sold on you about this potential possibility? Well, first of all, I think what we saw in President Joe Biden is somebody who's prepared to take on a second term and do it with passion and do it with vigor. If necessary, which will not be the case, I am ready. But the bottom line is our president is full of vigor and passion and perspective to take on another term. And I'm standing right with him. I also asked her whether the president would debate Trump. We'll get to that at some point and we'll deal with that. <laughs> Late today, Biden himself asked if he'll debate his rival. It depends on his behavior. The president is now hitting the campaign trail hard, blitzing key states in the coming days, including Georgia tomorrow and Michigan and Wisconsin next week. The president looking to capitalize on this momentum as the general election gears up. David. Mary Bruce, who was right there with us last night for the State of the Union. Mary, thank you. There are reports just coming in at this hour of a helicopter crash near the U.S.-Mexico border. The Texas Department of Public Safety confirming at this hour the helicopter went down in La Groya, Texas. Reports of possibly four people on board, a local congresswoman asking for prayers for those on board. Overseas tonight and to the new tragedy in Gaza, the Hamas-run health ministry tonight saying five children were killed by a pallet of desperately needed aid that had been dropped from an airplane. The parachute did not open. Authorities say it crushed the children. Tonight, the Pentagon aware of the reports, but also adding it was not U.S. delivered aid. Tom Sufi Burridge in the region tonight. This is the moment humanitarian aid dropped from the sky over Gaza and turned deadly. Pallets raining down, that parachute appearing to fail, plunging to the ground. Chaos as desperate Palestinians run to scoop up aid. What you don't see, five children crushed to death by a pallet, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. Tonight, the Pentagon saying it wasn't a U.S. airdrop that caused the casualties. We've confirmed that all of our aid bundles landed safely on the ground. With the U.N. saying more than half a million Gazans are facing starvation, President Biden caught on this hot mic moment after the State of the Union, speaking about Prime Minister Netanyahu. I told him, baby, the president quickly interrupted by an aide today saying Netanyahu needs to do more to get aid in. And tonight, a coalition of countries backing President Biden's plan for the U.S. military to build a temporary pier off Gaza's coast to allow aid in by sea. President Biden saying the Israelis will provide security, promising there will be no U.S. boots on the ground in Gaza. And just days before the start of the holy month of Ramadan, with no deal on a ceasefire, Hamas tonight calling on worshippers to march on Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque. Tensions flaring ahead of Friday prayers. Well, you can see there's real tension here. Young men are not allowed into the Al-Aqsa Mosque up there. The police are moving them away. Then peaceful prayers outside the walls, amid fears for what the future may hold. And David, just moments ago, President Biden addressing a possible ceasefire before Ramadan, saying it's looking tough. And on that mission to build a pier off Gaza, the Pentagon saying Hamas should not target that aid operation if it truly cares about the Palestinian people. David. Tom Sufi Burridge reporting again tonight. Tom, we thank you. Back here in the U.S., the former President Trump and tonight, just before the deadline, the former president posting a $91 million bond against what he owes writer E. Jean Carroll while he appeals the ruling in that defamation case. Now, this all comes amid questions about the money Trump still needs to put up, owing hundreds of millions of dollars in his other civil case. Here's Rachel Scott tonight. Tonight, with the Monday deadline fast approaching, Donald Trump posting a $91.6 million bond while he appeals E. Jean Carroll's victory in her defamation case. Trump securing that money from the Virginia-based federal insurance company, guaranteeing the bond with assets, including cash, but it's unclear how much. Carol will not get the money now. It will be held by court while Trump pursues his appeal. And it's only a fraction of the civil penalties he's been ordered to pay. He was fined $454 million in his civil fraud trial and will have to put a separate bond while he pursues that appeal too. This as Trump faces four separate criminal trials and his legal bills pile up. He's already used $50 million worth of donations to his political committees to pay his lawyers. And tonight, new questions about whether the Republican National Committee will chip in, too. Today, the RNC installing Trump's daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, as vice chair. We have one goal. The goal on November 5th is to win, and as my father-in-law says, big league. 
one RNC official proposing a rule to block the committee from paying Trump's legal bills, but it didn't get enough votes. Today, Lara Trump saying this. We are going to make sure that every single penny of every dollar raised goes towards one goal, which is winning. But again, David, RNC members are not ruling out the possibility of using donations to pay for Donald Trump's legal fees. It is something they have done in the past when the former president left the White House. David. Rachel Scott with us tonight as well. Thanks, Rachel. We're going to turn now to the dramatic testimony in the trial of the father of Michigan school shooter Ethan Crumbly. Tonight here, the gun store manager describing that father, James Crumbly, purchasing the gun and what the father promised on a form. Later, it was that gun used by his son to kill four students. Here's Trevor Alt. Tonight, a Michigan judge restricting the jailhouse communications of James Crumbly as he's on trial for his alleged role in his son's deadly school shooting. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office saying Crumbly's access to a telephone and electronic messaging has been limited due to threatening statements he made, but did not say who he allegedly threatened. Today, the jury of nine women and six men, most of them parents, many of them gun owners, hearing from the gun store manager who sold Crumbly the weapon that his then 15-year-old son used to carry out his massacre. Said he had had his eye on that for quite some time. She testified Crumbly received this cable lock and a gun safety pamphlet with the purchase and certified on this form he was buying the gun for himself. Prosecutors playing this video, James Crumbly telling police what he did when he heard there was an active shooter at his son's high school. He immediately raced home and found a gun in his hand. That's when I called you guys. Prosecutors playing that panic 911 call. I have a new finger at my son. At her trial, Jennifer Crumbly testified it was her husband's job to secure the family's weapons at home. It was more his thing, so I let him handle that. James Crumbly has already been in jail for more than two years, and under this new order, he'll only be allowed to communicate with clergy or his lawyer. His wife previously testified the couple hasn't spoken to each other in more than two years since they were arrested. David. Trevor Rolt with us tonight. Trevor, thank you. We're going to turn now to the economy. And after President Biden touted the 15 million new jobs under his watch last night, tonight the latest jobs report showing another number exceeding expectations tonight. 275,000 new jobs added last month. Unemployment ticking up slightly to 3.9 percent. When we come back here on a Friday night, news of a deadly crash shutting down a state highway, a tractor trailer and a van, at least nine dead tonight. And what the Pentagon is now saying this evening after claims that has been hiding secret UFO information all these years, what a new report reveals. Tonight we are learning more about a deadly crash between a tractor trailer and a van in Clark County, Wisconsin, southeast of Eau Claire. We're told at least nine people are dead, according to our affiliate KSTP, forcing the closure of a portion of State Highway 95 there. Tonight, an exhaustive Pentagon review of decades of classified records of UFO sightings has found no links to extraterrestrials and nothing to prove any kind of a cover-up over the years. Defense officials also say the U.S. has never possessed alien technologies that it tried to reverse engineer, refuting claims by former officials who said there were hidden UFO programs. When we come back, the new and important headline involving one of those popular weight loss drugs. To the index of other news, and tonight the FDA approving the popular drug used for weight loss, Wagovi, to treat adults with pre-existing cardiovascular disease who are also overweight or obese. Recent studies found the drug helped reduce the risk of cardiovascular events by 20%. Researchers say it's not clear if people without cardiovascular disease would also see improved heart health with the drug, saying it might be the weight loss with the drug that is bringing those benefits. When we come back here tonight, one of our own standing by on the red carpet, a different kind of assignment for him tonight, what to watch for, the Oscars. Finally tonight, the Oscars are Sunday and Whit Johnson on the red carpet tonight. David will be right here as the stars arrive on Sunday and with more access than ever before, including backstage at the so-called Winner's Walk. Ten films nominated for Best Picture, Oppenheimer leading the way with 13 nominations, and all eyes on Lily Gladstone, nominated for Best Actress in Killers of the Flower Moon. She could make history as the first Native American ever to win that category. And expect extra star power on stage. Five past winners in each of the acting categories will appear together to present the awards. The last time they did this was 2009. Plus, all five Best Original Song nominees will perform. Billie Eilish could make history for her song in Barbie.
becoming the youngest person to win two Oscars at just 22 years old. Ryan Gosling also nominated and will be performing the now viral song, I'm Just Ken. The song's co-writer and producer telling ABC News he wants to see Ryan on stage with a thousand Kens. A lot to watch out for this Sunday. David? We'll be watching with Johnson. Thank you. The Oscars, by the way, an hour earlier than normal, 7 p.m. Eastern Sunday right here on ABC. A big year for the movies. We'll see you Sunday night. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.